Hey guys, welcome back to Planet Terror. I'm your host, Donald Wonder. Now, if you don't know, guys, I do a lot of nostalgia reviews and for, for all the shows because I've got my list of shows I need to get through. Shows that have just been hailed as being great that nobody talks about anymore or that there's not enough reviews are about. So I'm, I always say I'm not just about jumping on the newest shit. I'm all about talking about quality shows. This show in particular is, uh, I don't want to say it's a Western, but it's based in that Western era, you know, the Gold Rush, Americans versus Indians, the Frontier, all that good stuff, Calamity Jane, etc, etc, etc. And I've just been told it's a masterpiece for years and it came way before its time. It was cut off way before its time. And I just finished it, man. I finished it while everyone was begging me to watch Daredevil, which I'm watching now, by the way, but I want to talk about this show first because once I started watching the show, I couldn't stop. And now I get to talk about it with you guys. Tyro Media. Guys, we're talking about Deadwood. Deadwood is a 2004 Western drama about a town in South Dakota called, well, it wasn't a town at the time, an area in South Dakota called Deadwood, which wasn't under the United States flag. It's set in 1877, and like I said, it's about the time of the gold rush and a lot of figures that are, this is based on real events and real people, by the way. Deadwood is a real place, and this does base its story on the factual events but at its core it's mostly about these characters and how they survived and how this area of Deadwood evolved. Now let me be real with you guys, the western, the whole genre of that kind of, I'm not going to say it appeals to me but if it's good acting, if it's compelling then I'm in, I don't care what it is, you can make anything good so and because this show was praised by so many critics, so many people I know that I trust with their opinions I knew I was going to get to the show eventually and I was watching Justified recently and I realized, yeah, this guy, Timothy Oliphant, came from that show. So I wanted to go back and see what all the hubbub was about. And yeah, like I said before, man, I was glued. Once, once I started watching the show, I was just glued. The characters are amazing. And although this, this show is based on real characters, it deviates. And some of the characters in this show are made up completely, like her, for example. And you know, it's a very compelling show because it's a period piece. The HBO did a great job with the set design. It, all of the, the costume design, the sets, this show looks fantastic. And because it's a period piece, it ages so well. It was shot over, what, 10 years ago? And it looks like something it was shot this year because that's how well they took the care to the attention to detail. The dialogue <laughs> with the American slang of that time, that old, where they're talking, not parables, but they're talking metaphors, so they speak in English, but it's hard to understand. The attention to detail with the dialogue is fucking fantastic. And speaking of fucking, as in dialogue, this show is actually known for having probably the highest level of profanity I've seen in any show. Every other word is motherfucker, cunt, fuck you, whatever, and it's juvenile in a sense, but it's authentic to the time. And it helps with the character immersion as far as I'm concerned. It's, it's, that's how they spoke back then. And you know, like I said, the script is based on diaries of, of the people that were actually alive, of the newspapers. So the events are real, but they did a good job at putting enough fiction mixed with the realism to make it compelling. Like I said, I, at the time, I don't think I would have, back in 2004, when I was 21 or whatever, I probably wouldn't have liked the show at all. But now I appreciate good storytelling, good acting more now. And I'm glad I watched it now because I appreciate the show on every level. Now, I'm not going to get into spoilers speaking about plot points, but I will say this is an ensemble show where it's not one character doesn't define the whole show. Although there is one standout character, which I'll get to, all the actors are just phenomenal. Uh, the main guy, the justified guy, which I just mentioned the name before, I do apologize, I can't remember right now. He's great. He's, I thought he was going to be the main character, but it's an ensemble piece, so he gets his time to shine. He was actually in the show a lot less in the first season than he is later on. Uh, the lady that plays Calamity Jane, wow, wow, phenomenal. 
Uh, there's a lot of people from The Wire in this show. There's a lot, there's a lot of HBO regulars in this show, and all the acting. I I apologize. They do not have the time to break down everyone else, but Calamity Jane is one I have to just she is just phenomenal. But my man, he looks shit. This guy right here. When you talk about unforgettable performances in, in television, you think of Walter White, Nucky Thompson, Stringer Bell, any heroes that resonate very well. This guy here, in I love this guy, the actor who wheels in Pillars of the Earth. I loved him in that and a lot of British shows like uh, that one, even Lovejoy. I wasn't a big fan of Lovejoy, but he's a great actor. This is the performance. You can watch this show for this guy alone. I said this was an ensemble piece. And all the characters matter, but this guy just kills it. He's in the show 90% of the time. He is the anti-villain at first, the anti-hero at the end, and I don't know what to say. He just kills it. His dialogue, his motivation. He's the he's the, he's the owner of a whorehouse, and he basically is the kingpin of the city that has no law. The, you know, this whole premise is people are just trying to live in this town, and it's not under the US flag, like I said. So. They're making the rules up as they go along. There's murders, there's prostitution, there's killing, there's thievery, and it just makes this show so interesting. Forget it's a period piece. Forget it's a Western. This show doesn't even have those, I meet you at high noon and them shootouts. This show is much more political, much more characterized, and just much more interesting for the subplots. The first two seasons are phenomenal. The first two seasons are just, I was glued to my chair. Now, the thing with this show is, it's, Notorious for, well, it's notorious for being cancelled too early. A lot of people said it didn't get its chance to wrap up in the fourth season. Let me be fair. I can, I can praise the show to high heaven, but I have to say, the last, the third season, I'm not going to say it was a crawl, but it, the pace was different. And that's because, not getting into spoilers, the plot was we have a new antagonist and everything is boiling to an eruption. This third season, shit's going to kick off at the end. You know that. But because of that, it's a lot of build up and from what I could tell the ratings was just not making you know the first the ratings weren't doing that well in the last season and this is a this was a very very expensive show for HBO to produce pay the actor salary the costume design all of that was this was a very high price and they just couldn't justify it and unfortunately it got cancelled what I will say is for me because I already knew it was going to get cancelled where it ended for me wasn't a breaking point and to be fair it didn't end on a cliffhanger it ended in a place where you knew that the last the next season was going to be the last and apparently there were going to be two movies that were two tv movies that were going to finish it off and it's a shame it never got made because now it's been over 10 years and that's not going to happen now uh, Ian McShane's over 70 now and you know they could still do it but I'm not that bothered that it didn't end not as bothered as the most and I'm putting this in perspective I never saw this at the time. I probably would have been more annoyed if I was watching it as it aired and this happened, but because I knew in my mind it was gonna end, I was happy where it ended. And I I recommend this show on the acting and the plots. You might not like Western, you might not like this era, but man, let me tell you something. The acting makes up for it. This is a masterful show. This is definitely unmissable. And it's a high first class. It's not in my Hall of Fame of shows just because, again, I'm not the biggest fan of this ever, but the acting, the dialogue, the characters, they just make this show a cut above the rest. And I, I just, I echo everything everyone else says about this show. I wouldn't mind a more conclusive ending, but on it, it's good on its own. It's good enough as it, on its own. And anyone watching it now, I think knowing that it doesn't end, doesn't hinder it completely. It's a high recommendation. Check out Deadwood. There's so much things I couldn't touch on, but I need to condense this with you, man. If you want to talk about it in the comments with me, leave a comment down below. But like I said, it's a high first class show. Acting's phenomenal. Ian McShane is just a, this is an unforgettable performance out there with the big boys. And it's just crazy. This show is 11 years old and it, it feels like it was made this year. It's just that good. So let me just stop the dick riding there, guys. If you've seen Deadwood, if you've got your own comments down below. And yes, I am very, very late to the party, guys. But... I will always go back and check out the good quality shows. I'm not just about jumping on the new shit. Guys, I've got my list and I'm gonna work through the old quality shows. So on that note, if you were dead, well, let me know in the comments below. Let me know what you think. If you've got any other shows you think that are worth rec recommending, that are just falling through the cracks that nobody talks about, that's what I'm here for at Planet. That's what we're here for, Planet Tyrell. 
shining the light on the hidden gems or the unsung heroes. That's what we do. And this was one of those guys. So let me just stop there. Anyway, guys, <laughs> thanks for watching. If this is your first time to Planet Tyro, welcome to the channel. As you can see, I ramble a lot about media because I'm a media lover. And as such, I talk about everything, animation, TV shows, books, what have you. And I'd love for you to subscribe to the channel to get the videos and reviews straight to your YouTube feed. But we'll leave it at there for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope to see you in the next one. And until then, take care. Peace out.